So we saw that what happens when I start to increase VG from zero to somewhere above the threshold voltage. I saw that my transistor goes from the off region of operation to on region of operation. And then for, for that turned on transistor, we're going to talk about different regions as well, but that's not part of our discussion right now. So if I increase VG, I'm going to turn on transistor. But how about VD? Initially, I had VD equal to zero. So although my transistor was turned on by VG, and I had a channel under the gate, uh, I didn't have any current, simply because, well, drain and source had the same potential. But then if I start to increase this VD, what happens is that I'm going to have some current, and we saw that we have a resistor-like behavior, right? One other thing that I notice is that if I have a resistor, and it's a really long resistor, a distributed resistor like what we uh, have under the gate, like the resistor that is representing the channel in our MOSFET. And I have a source here, let's say, and I have a drain here. If I apply one volt here, and I have, if I have zero volts here, right, you can imagine that it's not going to be, like, basically, in our electrical circuit analysis, we know that, like, the, the, resist, the resistor symbols that we use, well, we're basically representing a lumped model of the uh, of the conductive material that we're using as a resistor, right? Meaning that we had one volt here and we had zero volts here. We didn't have like 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, like we didn't have a gradual decrease of the resistor uh, or the volt, sorry, the voltage along the resistor. But somehow you know that there is something like that, right? We have something like that, meaning that if I have one volt here, if I had a way to actually measure the voltage at this point and at this point and at this point and at this point, I would have had some voltages like, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then I had one volt here, right? Another way of looking at this is that, well, a long resistor is kind of like a bunch of resistors in series, right? And we have a voltage divider that basically if I have drain here at one volt and here source is zero volt, then I know that if I have a bunch of resistors here, the voltage between these resistors are going to be some values between zero and one, and they're increasing as I go from left to right, okay? So I'm gonna talk about a similar concept here, that if I apply drain voltage here, I know that if I had a way to measure the voltage at this point, or at this point, or at this point, this voltage was increasing as I traveled from source to drain. Was it increasing linearly or non-linearly? I don't care too much about that, right? So I'm going to show it as a like a random increase. It's not like linear or exponential or logarithmic or anything else, right? Just the only thing I know about it is that as I travel from source to drain along the x-axis, if L represents the point that I reach the drain and zero is representing the source, so this is my source, this is where, where my drain is, I know that my Vx is going to go from 0 to Vd, right? Now, this means that if, again, I had a way to actually measure the difference between the gate voltage, and by the way, this gate is actually connected because this is a conductive material, all over this plate, I have the same voltage. So here is Vg, here is Vg, here is Vg, and here is Vg. So if I had a way to actually calculate the difference between here and this point of my channel, I would have had Vg because this point is zero, right? But then anywhere else along my channel, the difference between uh, the gate and that point in the channel is going to be somewhere less than Vg. And once I reach the drain, the difference is going to be Vg minus Vd. So I'm going to have a Vg minus Vd. So as the Vx, the voltage of the channel, is increasing along dx, it means that the, uh, the difference, gate substrate, potential difference, the difference between the voltage at the gate and the voltage at any point in my channel is going to be decreasing. Okay, I'm hoping that this is clear. And it's decreasing from Vg all the way to Vd minus Vg. Okay, or actually, sorry should be Vg minus Vd, okay? Now, why do I care about the voltage difference between the gate and the channel? It's because 
the density of free electrons that I have in the channel depends on that voltage. I know that this voltage difference was actually the reason that I had any free electrons in the first place. So I know that because I have on the source side, I have a very large difference between the gate and the channel voltage. I'm going to have more free electrons. And by the way, free electrons are shown by this light gray kind of a shade here, right? So I'm going to have more free electrons here. But then as I travel from source to drain, this voltage difference, as we saw in the previous slide, it, it, it decreases. Therefore, I'm going to have less and less electrons here. Okay. Now, as long as this voltage difference is greater than the, greater than the tertial voltage, I still have free electrons. Let's say that if my VG is 2 volts, and let's say VD is 1 volt, and let's say that the tertial that is given to us is 0.5 volts, right? So the voltage difference here is going to be 2 volts, and at the drain is going to be 1 volt. Both of these voltages, these, these differences, is, are greater than 0.5. So on both sides, and then, well, anywhere between source and drain, I have some voltage difference between 1 to 2 volts, okay? By the way, I want to make sure that you understand this is the voltage difference between gate and the channel, not the voltage at here, right? The voltage at the drain or in the channel is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1, right? So because it's changing from 0 to 1, the difference is changing from 2 uh, to 1. It's, uh, the, the voltage is increasing, so the difference, uh, uh, basically, the, the voltage difference between gate and the channel is going to be decreasing. So now, this is the circuit that is actually... Um, describing this situation where we have the basically the gate voltage is the difference between the gate voltage and the drain voltage is greater than the tertial voltage right now let's see what happens if i actually further increase my vd let's say i've increased my vd so that the gate voltage minus the drain voltage is exactly equal to tertial voltage meaning that let's keep the vg equal to two volts but then let's increase vd to 1.5 volts okay and my tertial voltage is still at 0.5 now the voltage difference here is still 2 volts but then the density of electrons you can see that it's actually decreasing at with a much faster or much higher slope and then once i actually reach to the drain side because the voltage difference between the two here on the top I have 2, in the bottom I have 1.5. So voltage difference is going to be 0.5, which is exactly equal to the tertial voltage. So this is the moment that the channel is created. So at that voltage, I can say that my transistor is at the verge of having a free electron at this point. But, well, it might not still have it yet. I have to have the gate voltage in epsilon volts or millivolts or microvolts or nanovolts higher than tertial voltage to have a channel. So this means that right at the drain, my, the density of my free electrons is going to be equal to zero. And like this process, or like at this situation, we say that the channel is actually pinched off, or like this process is actually ca called channel pinch off. So now the question is that what happens if I increase VD even further? Let's say that my VGs is still at two volts, my threshold is still 0 0.5 volts, but I increase VD to, I don't know, 1.8, right? Now, I can see that the pinch-off point is actually moving from uh, ex to be exactly at the drain to some other point at, let's say, at, the, at here, right? So basically meaning that my channel becomes shorter and shorter, right? So... You can imagine that if the voltage of the channel at this point is 0 and this point is 1.8, the, the critical voltage, which was 1.5, is going to happen at some length called L1, right? So somewhere in the middle. And at that point, I'm not like from that point forward or to the right, I'm not going to have any channel left. Okay? So this pinch off could actually be extended more and more as I'm increasing drain voltage. Now, does this mean that since I don't have any channel uh, in that in that area, does this mean that the transistor cannot conduct current? Well, fortunately, no. The answer is no, we still have current. And the reason for that is that once I have this uh, n-type diffusion and because I have a p-type substrate, I'm going to have some p-n junction here. And it's going to be there's going to be a big depletion region uh, around this n-type, um, n-plus type region, which we called it 
oops, let me use my laser pointer, uh, this N, N plus type region, which you call the drain, right? So there's going to be a big depletion region here, and there's going to be a lot of positive ions here, negative ions there. So I have a very strong electric field here that helps me to shoot the electrons that reach this depletion region to the drain. So it means that the, the electrons are going to be basically, we do have electrons here, and these electrons are going to be moving because I've applied the voltage between source and drain. And then once they actually reach the edge of the pinch off region, because there's a uh, strong electric field here, they're going to be basically, as mentioned here, they're going to be rapidly swept to the drain terminal. So things are good. We still have uh, uh, we still have movement of electrons. We still could we still can have a current between drain and source. But then because of this pinch off, something very interesting happens.